Hey guys, welcome back to True Sound Studios. I'm Wiesna. Now, this video I'm gonna show you is definitely like a throwback. This is this is some footage that got lost. I never released this video. And uh, so I definitely wanted to bring it up, but it's a throwback because you're gonna notice that I do not have this desk. Uh, it's actually the old Allen & Heath mixing console um, is what I used a majority of the mic pre's from. And that was also a time where I was recording other artists still it's kind of in this like transitional period uh so i couldn't even set up drums in my vocal booth so i actually set them up right here in the control room so you guys can see all the different mics i'd have used um obviously i'll give you an audio example of what it sounded like fully mixed and processed and then i'll also show you uh some of the stuff on the mixing console that i used because like I was saying, most of the mic pre's that I ended up using were uh, right from the, the Allen & Heath. So uh, take a listen to this audio clip. This is the song and then obviously the final mix drums. And so now let me show you guys all the different mics and the mic pre's and that type of stuff. Okay, so right off the bat, let's start with the snare drum. This is a five and a half inch steel Yamaha snare. Uh, got the Evans uh, level 360 drum head on the top. And for microphone, I am using the Audix i5. And you can kind of see the angle. It's, it's pretty much looking, actually when it was recording, it was pretty much looking right at the center of the snare drum. Um, and I have, it's actually a little rubber circle. It's from a mic stand that I taped down here. And that's to get rid of some of the, you know, some of the overtones and uh, deaden the snare just a little bit. It still has a good amount of ring to it, but on the, uh, on the bottom here, uh, this is a Shure SM58, uh, put more commonly used like as a vocal mic, but I really like using this as a bottom mic sounds like, so I'll definitely have to show you guys what that sounds like. And then we come over to here, this is a, you know, what some people would call like the dick mic. Um, I call it an overkick mic. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, but this is a Sennheiser E609 and it's looking kind of like on a 45 degree angle. So kind of picking up the side of the snare and also grabbing some of the kick drum. And that's pretty close. That's probably about one inch away from the snare. I've tried uh, condensers in the past, but this was uh, this was a new, you know, a new microphone to use on this particular situation, and uh, it worked out pretty good. And now, if we pull back, the entire drum shell, so all three toms and the kick drum, are a 1969 Ludwig. Um, this drum kit actually came from my dad. Uh, he uh, he still tries to play, but <laughs> uh, anyways, so we got a, a 13 inch tom up here, and using the Sure Beta 91s. So if you guys are enjoying this video, please click that like button. And these are actually condenser microphones, but I, I really like what they sound like on drums. You can see that they are maybe about an inch and a half away from the actual drum head. And it's not firing towards the middle of the drum. It's a little bit closer to the edge here, and that's to give a little bit more fatness out of the drum um, and not so much attack. Uh, just at least in my, how I mix drums, I don't love a ton of attack, and if I need more, I can obviously get it. But I am using the included uh, drum clamps that they come with. Same thing over here. This is a, a 14 inch Tom and this one is kind of like shock mounted. That that particular Tom though is actually just on a snare stand. Uh, using the same, same Shure mics, really the same setup. Just because of how I play, um, I don't play cross-handed, I play open-handed. So my left hand is actually on the hi-hat, my right hand is on the snare. And then this way I can do fills but because I would have to cross my hand 
in order to use the tom I have in my actual floor tom over here. Now this is a 16 inch floor tom. Uh, it's got some mighty thunder to it. And on, on this one, I'm using a Shure SM57. This one though is kind of really more aiming towards the, the center of that drum. I find with this particular drum and just floor toms in general, it's, it's, you definitely get the thickness out of the drum, but sometimes it's not as easy to get the amount of tack just because of the size of the, the actual drum, the drum itself. So now let's go ahead our way over to the kick drum. So as the outer kick drum mic, or the kick out as I call it, I'm using the Audix D6. And if you can see in there, pressed up almost against the, the drum head is a Shure SM57 as like my kick in mic. And that really, that is the kick drum sound. I'm, I'm using the uh, the Remo as the resonant head, and then there's um, Evans Emad as the banner head. Now that takes us to some of the other microphones that I'm using. And I've never actually tried this before, but I'm using underhead. So there is, as you can see, there is no overheads over the drum kit. This is the first time I've used this. Um, but uh, it actually turned out really good. I would still probably change a couple things next time, but um, I'm using the, if you can see in there, the Rode NT1A mics. If you look at it like this, it's kind of aiming up, uh, maybe on a 25 degree angle-ish. <clears throat> so it's capturing these symbols. I have uh, China over here, a crash, and a splash right there. So it's kind of grabbing that in the side of the drum kit. Same thing over here. Here's the other underhead, which is grabbing that China, the hi-hats, and this crash. And once again, this is on the same angle. And I measured from the capsule to the center of the snare drum and made sure that was the same over there. Just for good phase aligning, obviously you could line it up afterwards, but I like doing this stuff. Uh, you know, if I have the option to move things around and try stuff out, I like to do it before I go ahead and record. Uh, just one last thing to deal with. Uh, these just came in to the studio, so I did not use those <laughs> uh, during this recording. And then the last mic is a mono room mic. It is a AKG 451 EB with an Omni capsule on there. And that's, that's pretty, it's a pretty good distance away. I mean, that's probably 15 feet ish to the actual, um, the drum kit itself. But what I loved about this and in the recording, I didn't actually think I, you know, I, I wasn't sure what this was going to sound like. This is the first time I've ever tracked drums in here, but it actually has a whole bunch of low end in it from the kick drum, which was super nice. Um, still obviously picking up some some brightness from the cymbals, which will have to be dealt with. But you can see all the acoustic treatment on the ceiling here in the studio. This really helps get rid of um, a lot of that washiness, uh, that, that all that cymbal brightness that you would get in a room mic. Um, all the walls are acoustically treated. We have diffusion back there, bass traps in every single corner at at least two feet thick. The uh, same thing with these bass traps here. These are monster, monster bass traps. And so they are helping to control the low end in here, which is the reason why I decided to track drums in here. So if you guys like content like this and you want to see more, consider subscribing. And if you're wondering what this bottom thing is, it's actually, it's, uh, it's some half inch plywood. And some of them have little hinges on them. So they fold, this whole thing folds up. But the point was, is I have brand new flooring because I just built this studio um, and I didn't want to damage it with all of the, you know, the spikes from the kick drum pedals, the kick drum, the hi-hat, things like that. So I just, I set up the drum kit on a piece of lumber and kind of traced it all out and cut it out and spray painted it. And this is what you get. So underneath the actual half inch plywood is some vinyl strips, just so that this whole thing doesn't move. Cause obviously hitting that kick drum, you know, while I'm playing is kind of forcing it that way. But also, let me set this up here real quick. This drum throne also sits on here. So my, my weight 
is also sitting on here. So it also helps stop any movement from that kick drum. And uh, this worked out great. Nothing moves. And because it has the hinges, these fold up, it's about three feet wide by about three feet high. It's not really a perfect uh, square or anything like that, but it uh, works really nice. Let me just show you over here real quick. There's actually a two by four block. You can see that right here that sits in front of the kick drum. So no matter what, and this is screwed into the plywood. So no matter what, this kick drum would have to overcome uh, about an inch and a half of lift in order to get it out here. And uh, fortunately, nothing moved. This worked out really well, and I will definitely continue to use this. Okay, so now that you guys have seen what the mic setup and the drum kit looks like, now let's go ahead and jump over to the mixing console to go ahead and see what gear I use to record this. Okay, so if we just jump right into here, um, I have three Black Lion Audio mic pre's. Two of them are the B173. See B173. And then this one is the B12A. So this is what we um I used on kick and snare because obviously the most most important thing. So I got this first one is the snare top mic. Um, the bottom B173 was the kick out. And to get a lot of that snappiness out of the kick drum, I use the like API style. Black Lion for the kick in. So this is what I use for kick and snare. And if we come over to here, these eight channels were picking up the rest of the microphones. You can see right here, um, these were the three Tom mics, and these are all using the built-in uh, mic pre's right here on the mixing console. Uh, the over kick mic, or the dick mic as some people call it, was here. Um, that center room mic, was right there. So the snare bottom did get the built-in mic pre um, on the mixing console and then the same thing with both overheads. So when it comes to mixing, I did use a whole bunch of this gear. Um, I did analog summing on 16 channels plus two stereo channels over here. And I used um, about eight channels of outboard effects. Those are the outboard effects over there. They're not turned on right now. So. After I get the drums to sound more exactly the way I want, I will bring you guys back and you can see how all this gear is working together with the DAW to get the drum sound that I was looking for. So the band is called Optum and I actually ended up kind of joining this band. Uh, it's, it's not like we all live, we all live in different parts of the world. So it's kind of like a online band, I guess you would say. Um, but anyways, it's called Optum. Uh, this is one of the first couple tracks that we're gonna release and we have five more. Um, plus, we are actually taking all these songs and we are hand cutting them onto vinyl. Whole nother thing we'll get into at another point, but I uh, just wanted to kind of show you guys this. Now, if you guys do want to see maybe how I mix these drums, you know, that could be a, another video. Please leave me a, a comment down below if you're interested in that. Or maybe you just want to, you know, see some more drum tracking stuff. Please let me know. Leave a comment. I would really appreciate it. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.